In order to find the output of a filter, given a certain input, we need to compute the convolution sum. Unfortunately, computing the convolution sum can be extremely computationally intensive. In this lecture, we discuss how to quickly compute the convolution sum. Hopefully, you remember that we can calculate the sigma convolution of the input and filter by multiplying the DFT of both systems and taking the inverse DFT of their product. Since the FFT is the fastest way to calculate the DFT, we would use an FFT algorithm to perform this calculation. Unfortunately, cyclic convolution is not the same as linear convolution. In the top diagram, we see how cyclic convolution loops the later samples of the input around the filter coefficients. To compute a linear convolution, we want to eliminate the effects of this loop around. By inspection, we can see that the easiest way to implement linear convolution through cyclic convolution is to zero pad the length of the input and the filter. This way, when we loop the input around, we want the loot portions to be filled with zeros. Therefore, if x and h are both length n, then we will want to pad x and h with n minus 1 zeros. If x has length n and h has a different length of m, then we want to zero pad x and h so they both have the same length. We also have to make sure that the zero padded length of x and h is still a power of 2. If our input sequence is very long, we still have to wait for the entire length of x to enter the system before we can compute the convolution with the FFT. This wait would cause a huge delay in the system. To minimize this delay and still use the FFT, we can split the input into a set of shorter signals. We would then convolve each of these shorter signals with the filter. With this method, we would pad our input and filter with zeros, just like we described a moment ago, and use the FFT method of convolution. After we compute the FFT of our truncated signal, the first L samples of this convolution would match our desired output but the remaining m minus 1 samples would not match our desired output. These samples would not match our desired output because these samples needed to be convolved with samples from the second portion of this truncated signal. While we can send the first L samples to the output of the system, we need to finish the convolution for the remaining samples. We can complete the first convolution by calculating the second convolution. By overlapping and adding the second convolution with the first, we can complete the convolution for the first input sequence and begin the convolution for the second input sequence. By repeating this method of overlapping and adding smaller convolutions, we can compute the full convolution sum for the entire input sequence one chunk at a time. During this lecture, we discussed how to use zero padding and the FFT to quickly compute the convolution of two signals. We also showed that you can break a lengthy convolution into a set of smaller convolutions. If you properly overlap and add these smaller convolutions, you can create a convolution sum of any length.